going to show you how to repin, maintain, uh, swap cylinders, swap pins, springs, etc, etc, in your locks. This way, um, this is great for a lot of things. For people who don't pick even, you can fix your lock. If something becomes damaged in it, you can rekey your lock if you've lost your keys or if you're concerned about somebody who used to have a key, um, etc. For pickers, it's fantastic because you can change the pin stacks, you can make a more challenging lock for yourself. We even have some security pins here, and I'll drop a couple of security pins in as well uh, to make the picking of this that much harder. Okay, let's get started. Alright, so there are a lot of things that are going to help us out today. First up, our plug follower. This is a uh, half inch diameter, is the standard. Um, you'll find some plugs will be a little bit smaller, ones in padlocks, things like that, but half inch tends to be the standard. I actually sawed the top off this one because it had a little lip that I didn't like, and I'll show you why I didn't like that later. Well, plug followers are great, they're fantastic, but you can also use a lot of normal household objects. The, uh, the pen cap off a of Sharpie actually works brilliantly. And we also have our tweezers. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is remove the tailpiece of the lock. So this is a normal kick cylinder. It's called uh, kick is key in knob cylinder. Okay. So all we have to do is press in on this little pin, this little pin right there, and I'm just going to press down on that with either the tweezers or something else, and then twist the cap off. Now I want to make sure that I don't lose that pin. I also want to dump out the spring that you can see there, and I'm going to place that right in here as well. I just do that to make sure that I don't lose them later. I don't have a pinning tray at the moment, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab a piece of printer paper, and if I fold this, it doesn't even have to be particularly even or anything, but yes, if I just like that, there we go. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six little chambers here which are going to hold my pins in place, which is exactly how many I need. What works brilliantly for this and is less cumbersome is corrugated cardboard. Uh, you rip one side of it off and those corrugations fit a pin beautifully. This is going to do for us for now though, so I'm not going to complain. All right, with my plug follower ready, I'm just going to take the keys, insert, turn so that they're out of position, the pins are out of position, and then, really importantly, I'm going to put this side in just to show you what's important. You want to make sure that you don't, if you have a notch taken out of yours, which some of these will, that you don't line that up with the Bible. Otherwise, as soon as you push forward, that sixth pin is going to slide right down past it and screw you up immediately. It's going to drop right out. So, we're going to line this up so that the flat closed bit lines up with the Bible, put them nice and flush up against each other and just push out. There we go. And you can see the pins being revealed right here with the key. All right. There you go. All right. Now, really important, I want to make sure that I keep these in order. We'll dump a pin here, drop it into slot one, dump a pin, slot two. I'm just keeping my thumb over this while I'm doing the dumping. Should have used a smaller piece of paper. Dump, drop, dump, drop, dump, drop, dump, drop. Perfect. Alright, so now I have all of my key pins lined up. That's great. But I still have all of my drivers and all of my springs in here. Now this is just a normal Schlage kick cylinder, uh, like I said before, so I know that all of the drivers are going to be the same length, so I don't need to worry about lining those up specifically, but I don't want them all flying all over the place, and if I were only changing out key pins, which in reality I am because I'm just swapping in those security pins, I could just leave this plug follower in place and never mess with the springs and pins in the Bible. I of course want to show you exactly how to mess with the sp springs and pins in the Bible, so we are going to pull that apart. Here we go. All right, so with my thumb over this, I'm just going to slowly one, 
two, I don't know if you can hear it, three, four, five, six. I'm going to shake any remaining pins out of there, and now I have a nice, clear, empty shell. All right, first spring down, next one, next one, next one, next one, next one, and now my driver pins, of course. In some locks, your driver pins will be of different sizes, which will correspond to the different sizes of the pins, making for balanced stacks. That can be good for a fistful of reasons, but the easiest to uh, relate to is that it prevents a decoding attack where you would simply push all of the stacks up to their furthest extreme then notice the differences in heights between them and you would have the cuts in the key first things first I'm gonna put the key the uh, key pins back in the plug I suggest you always use the key if you have it slide it right into the plug just to make sure you're lining everything up correctly first pin. That's nice and flush. I think I'm doing good. Nice and flush. There we go. Nice and flush right flat across the top there. Beautiful. So remember when I said that I took the top off of this? I'm going to show you a way to use your plug follower to, to pin these that's a little bit faster than how you might have been taught otherwise. So instead of placing the first spring in uh, either our first or last chamber here, I'm going to place it into the middle. Can you see in there? Excellent. Spring and plug follower. Now I'll take my driver pin, and what I'm doing is I'm going in, and I'm pushing it down on the spring, and then I just push with my pinky, and I'm pushing the plug follower, and it's holding it there just with a horizontal pressure. I then take the tweezers, push down on the pin and now my plug follower can move forward now we're going to do this for the rest of the pins I'll tell you, there are very few things, to me, that are quite as relaxing as pinning locks. Given the excuse, I could pin locks for hours. I know that might sound a little odd, but it's kind of, uh, it's almost a meditative thing for me. Whoop. So I say I get it right most of the time, but <laughs> I could probably make do with the pin tweezers. If they weren't like $20, I absolutely would. So we're here at the closest one, and I just want to once again, you can see that that's only being held in place because I'm pushing forcefully with the plug follower against it, and I'm just pressing down with the tweezers, and then it can follow me through. So why did I go from the middle out? Well, now I can slide this all the way through, which I couldn't do if it had that cap still on it, but I can slide it all the way through and start from the middle again going in the opposite direction. And this makes life a lot easier. Not having to put that tweezer all the way through to the other side for the spring and the pin and then pressing the pin down and everything makes this all so much easier and quite a bit faster too. Alright, here comes the spring. Spring in. Driver in, press down, spring in. 
driver in. Missed it. Press down. Spring in. Driver in. Pushed it, and once again, just to show you up close one last time, it's just being pressed in place there by the plug follower, and now I shoop it in. Okay, and we have a fully pinned lock. Don't forget, which side is the back? This side with the cuts. So from the front, all we do, make sure that these match up. Once again, don't line the gap up to the Bible. Make sure these match up. And we don't want, this is so important, don't slide this in with the plug facing perfectly vertical. Move one or the other of them offline, otherwise you're going to get caught right like that, because that first pin will drop into the first chamber, and then you're screwed. It's a really obnoxious situation to be in. I've been there plenty of times. All right, so slide it in. And now we just turn the plug. You can feel it lock into place there. You can hear it. Beautiful. We'll put the, back of our, uh, put the cap back on, but first I want to show you what's awesome about this guy. I'm sure that everybody has seen these. These are just the security tags that come on DVDs, video games, uh, sometimes even on books. Um, we have toner cartridges here at the office that typically have them in the packaging for them, all sorts of things. For a lock picker, they are indispensable. These are phenomenal. We'll show you how to decode sesame locks with these and another uh, taping at some point. And today, we're going to show you how to open a lock that you can't pick without the key. This is something that you can't... This isn't a valid attack without the lock being out of the door already. This is only good for maintenance, but it is a lifesaver when you really need to fix a lock and you just can't get it open. So like I said, you can find these almost anywhere. Personally, I've actually raided my, uh, my roommate's DVD collections to get as many of these as I can because, I mean, nobody else really needs them but lock pickers and, you know, potentially the locksmith working on a low budget. There we go. And there's another one in there too that you can see. It's just being really finicky and not coming out for me, but that's okay. So using this guy, you bend it very slightly. And much like a lot of the, um, a lot of the sort of found object tools that we'll use here, these are things that you can buy. There's just no real need to. Okay, so tucked right there. We're tucking it right in between the plug and the Bible, and a lot of you I bet are already seeing where this is going. We now, from the back, are going to start pushing pins up while sliding this down into place. We push the pin up with the pick, it raises it to the shear line, this little strip of metal slides between them, and we're shimming our way through. Excellent. So I've gotten four so far, so I, I have four pins set. We now are working on a two-pin lock, so let's just get our tension wrench and pop this sucker open. If we were having a trouble opening it before, setting several of these back pins with our shim, that's going to make it a lot easier now, so hold on. We'll just drop a tension wrench right in there. A little light tension, a little single pin picking. And there we go. The lock is open. And this little sliver of metal made my job a ton easier. And now, same story. Slide that plug follower in there. Slide that plug out of there. And this time, let's put in our security pins, huh? But here we go. I'm going to make use of the key again, of course. And start dropping these guys in there. So we're 337, so we know that this guy is going in the third chamber. Oh, look at that. That's perfect flush fit, and that's going to make this a much nicer pick now. That's going to be much more interesting to work on.
awesome. Okay, here we go. Going in. Key out, lock in. We got a serrated pin in there now, six pins, a little bit of travel over the pins, uh, not a super complex bidding, but this is going to be a nice lock to pick now, and we just did that. We just got to put this cap back on, and we'll be back in business. Awesome. All right, so there's our lock, um, and that's about all there is to it. Once again, you know, being able to use those found objects like the DVD tag or the Sharpie caps instead of the plug followers or whatever the case may be, even the piece of paper instead of a $60 pinning tray, it's going to make this really fun hobby stay inexpensive for you. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll catch you again. Bye.